dead, a shootout in Lexington, and a grandma who almost got caught in the crossfire. Yes, I said, run, run, run. That our team is committed to getting this thing right, and we will. Will a trip to the track this year be smoother? And an ex-cat hopes to make a splash. ABC 36 News at 11 starts now. Thanks so much for staying up with us. I'm Christine Winter. Breaking news tonight from the Red River Gorge. A missing man has been found alive. Gerald Bush has been taken to UK hospital. He's critical, according to Eddie Connor, the Wolf County Search and Rescue Coordinator. Connor says Bush was very dehydrated after being missing and after not having his medication for four days. A Lexington man is being charged with assault after police say he shot another man. The victim was shot in the thigh this afternoon on Osage Court. But as ABC 36's Ian Preston tells us, the real story might be what didn't happen to a family caught in the middle. I think it'll be a while if I get past that. Luana Taylor and her three grandkids were just about to leave their home on Osage Court when they found themselves in a very dangerous situation. I tried to grab you, but you already started uh, speeding off. There was a gentleman standing by the car, and there was gunfire, and I thought it was kept gun at first. Then I realized I kept hearing bucking and bucking, and I, I saw him go for cover, and I told the grandkids, I said, this is real. He was shooting at somebody else. I said, run, run, run. And so we ducked, and we ran to the house. This way over here. Taylor and her grandkids didn't even know the man who was hiding behind her car who police later identified as 18-year-old Dante Howard. All Taylor could think about at the time was her family. It was all over with and wasn't scared to come back out. I saw how many kids was out here, how many people could have died. There were vehicles on material things, but we could have lost our life. And I'm ready to move. I've been here three weeks and I'm ready to move. Police say Howard got into an argument with this man, Demarcus Jones, over an unpaid bill. They say that's when both men pulled out guns on each other and opened fire in the middle of the parking lot. Taylor says she's outraged by what a simple feud almost cost her. Think about you or somebody's child, and you wouldn't want that to happen to you because one of us could be dead today because of child's gunfire. Police say Jones tried to flee but was eventually caught. Even so, Taylor says she won't be letting her grandkids go outside by themselves anytime soon. Reporting in Lexington, Ian Preston, ABC 36 News. Police say Howard is not being charged at this time, despite, they say, shooting at Jones. Also today, a man was hurt during a shootout in Nicholasville, but police say he wasn't hit by the bullet. Police say a man was driving in a pickup truck when he realized someone was shooting at him. According to police, a bullet shattered a window in the truck, and the man was hit by shrapnel or glass. That victim and a passenger were treated on the scene. They did not go to a hospital. Police say this shooting was the result of a dispute that started yesterday. A biker died and a second was hurt after a crash in Scott County along I-64. The sheriff's office says a car driving east lost a tire around mile marker 68. Deputies say the tire went across the median and into westbound traffic and two motorcycle riders swerved to avoid it. They both crash. The sheriff's office says one of them died. He was 53-year-old Christopher Rose of Algonquin, Illinois. The other went to the hospital. He's 51-year-old Andrew Scholl, also of Illinois. Police say they were not wearing helmets. The jury in the Jerry Sandusky case has stopped deliberating for the night. Closing arguments were today in the trial of the former Penn State assistant football coach. He's accused of sexually abusing 10 boys. He could get life in prison if convicted. His attorneys say Sandusky's accusers are just looking for money. Jurors deliberated for about eight hours before stopping around 9.30 tonight. It was yet another stifling afternoon, only about a degree or two cooler than yesterday under partly cloudy skies. 91 for the official high in Lexington, 90 degrees for Jackson, and 92 for London Bowling Green, making it up into the mid-90s. Right now, though, temperatures are on the decline. Still very warm, though. Still 80 degrees in Jackson, 76 in London, and 76 degrees in Lexington. Winds currently calm. Across central and eastern Kentucky, we do have a little bit of fog forming, especially areas that have received a little bit of rainfall in south central and southeastern portions of the state. 
Still a couple of ongoing isolated showers in extreme uh, south central portions of the state. Check out the western portions of the state. Cloud cover and a couple of scattered showers. That's associated with a cold front that's going to bring Kentucky some much needed rain. It's not going to be a lot of rain. It is going to be very widely scattered, but it is going to keep temperatures about five degrees cooler for our Friday afternoon, and then we'll dry out by Saturday, and we could certainly use the rain on top of cooler temperatures. We'll have a drought update and even below average temperatures in the seven day forecast. We'll talk about that coming up in just a few minutes. Back to you, Christine. Thanks so much, Lauren. Kentucky is losing almost 600 coal jobs. Arch Coal, based in St. Louis, Missouri, announced layoffs today in several Appalachian states. The company says it's because of the changing coal market. Many utility companies are switching to natural gas as it declines in costs. Governor Bashir says he's authorized the state to help workers find new jobs and get new training. The news is better statewide. New numbers show the jobless rate went down in 107 of the state's 120 counties. It got worse in 12 and stayed the same in one. Woodford County had the lowest unemployment at 5.3%. Fulton County in western Kentucky was the worst with an unemployment rate of almost 20%. Remember this TV commercial last year when Allison Lundergan Grimes was running for Secretary of State? She ran an ad with both of her grandmothers. Well, today, Grimes announced one of them has died. Thelma Lundergan, McHugh, seen here on the right, on the right when you see the three of them together, wearing pink, uh, died today at her home in Jessamine County at the age of 92. And that's according to a statement from Grimes' office. Nine days and counting to the Quaker State 400 at the Kentucky Speedway in Sparta. And it's the first test of the improvements made to the track since last year's traffic nightmare. Now there are more lanes, more parking spaces, and more parking attendants. State police reviewed the changes today. The necessary changes have definitely been made to improve access to the track, reducing traffic congestion and delay. State police released a map showing the Speedway's traffic plan. You can't tell much here. It looks a little complicated, but you can take a look at the map in detail at our website. Just go to WTVQ.com. By this time next week, we will know what NBA teams took which Kentucky Wildcats in the NBA draft. One of those cats worked out for another potential suitor today. Sports director Dan Reefer joins us with more in tonight's Solid Blue Report. Terrence Jones was in Toronto Thursday working out for the Raptors, which have the eighth overall draft pick. Wednesday, Jones was in Milwaukee. He says at this point, all the workouts are beginning to run together. I think seven or eight. I don't even know off the top of my head. Are the days in the city's all sort of wearing at this point? Yeah, I mean, I, I really didn't even know what yesterday was. Uh, so, I mean, it's just working out and just getting it in. I mean, it's fun, though. How many more uh, workouts do you anticipate your agent sending you to? Um, I think one or two. Uh, I really don't even know. I just travel wherever the itinerary says. So. Coming up, Coach Cal is surprised by the skill level of one of his new freshmen. Plus, former cat Derek Anderson tells us who's better, his 1996 champs or the 2012 title winners. And we'll also hear from Randall Cobb. All that coming up in sports. Christine. Look forward to it, Dan. Thanks. Still warm outside. Lauren says it will cool down some, but you'll still need to drink plenty of water. If you do, you won't be alone. Hey, I'm Derek Anderson. Make sure you get your Victory H2O before you watch ABC 36 Sports. Let's go. The Fifth Third Bank Tennis Championships, presented by the Lexus Store of Lexington, starting July 23rd. Come join ABC 36 at UK's Boone Tennis Complex. For more information and tickets, visit LexingtonChallenger.com. Can American Dad keep you laughing five times a week? <laughs> I got a question about the future. You see yourself taking a shower ever? American Dad, now on five times a week. Viewer discretion advised. Weeknights at 12.30 a.m. on MyTVQ2. 
And now, your ABC 36 Storm Team forecast with the accuracy of live Viper high-definition radar. ABC 36 Storm Team, your weather authority. Meteorologist Lauren Jones is in this morning uh, <laughs> for meteorologist Jennifer Shack. We were talking Thursday morning, so warm, so quickly, 9 a.m. even, hitting the 80s. It was, it was tough outside. Yeah, it's been a little tough stretch here. We've been in the 90s practically every afternoon, but it's not even as hot here as it is in New York City, which is kind of shocking. These are the highs from today. Washington, D.C., making it up to 99 degrees. New York City making it up to 98 degrees, so hot all across the board. 98 New York, 99 for Washington. Well above average heat indices into the triple digits. Lexington making it up to 91, so we didn't skimp out on that heat as well. A good 5, 10 degrees above average for this time of year. We were closing in on that record of 97 that was set back in 1988, but not quite. We also started out at 65 degrees this morning, so it was at least feeling a little bit better. We do have some relief on the way, at least slightly. We really need some rainfall on top of that as well, and we're going to get a little bit of relief from both. This activity to our west is associated with a cold front. That's going to be bringing some scattered showers and slightly cooler temperatures over the next several days. The scattered showers will arrive late tonight and stick with us for most of the day, and we could really use some rain. Most of the state of Kentucky, with the exception of north central Kentucky, at least abnormally dry. Western Kentucky dealing with the worst of that, but they have now upgraded parts of eastern Kentucky to a moderate drought. So we really need the rainfall, and we're not going to get a lot of rainfall, but we'll take anything we can get right now. Still a couple of isolated showers on Live Viper HD. We'll take a quick look at that. You can see in south central Kentucky dealing with very light showers, even a couple rumbles of thunder associated with this. We're getting a couple of lightning strikes on Live Viper HD. These are slowly meandering to the east, but most of central and eastern Kentucky is dry right now. Slowly cooling off, but still very warm. 76 degrees right now. Dew points in the mid 60s. 64 degree dew point relative humidity at 67 percent. So feeling Almost like the 80 degree mark, winds currently calm, so we are getting a little bit of fog formation, especially in south central Kentucky, areas that received a little bit of that rainfall. 76 degrees right now in Lexington, sitting at 80 degrees in Jackson, 76 in London, and a little bit cooler in Monticello at 70 degrees right now. Winds calm, really only picking up at around 3 miles an hour, if anything, so light winds all across central and eastern Kentucky. Again, we're getting a little bit of fog. You can see Monticello visibility is reduced to 7 miles, so not dense fog, but just keep an eye on that if you are headed out into the early morning hours. We're going to be very mild tonight, only dropping off into the mid to upper 60s. A little bit cooler tomorrow. We made it up into the 90s today. We're going to be making it up into the mid 80s tomorrow, thanks to a little bit more cloud cover and those scattered showers, all associated with that cold front. It doesn't have a lot of moisture to work with, and it's not going to cool us off too much, but as it approaches, again, slightly cooler temperatures behind that, and we'll get a little bit of that much-needed rain fall on top of that. It is going to slow down as it tracks across the central portions of the state. By around mid-morning and midday tomorrow, we'll begin to see those scattered showers associated with that. Sliding quickly off through eastern Kentucky will be dry tomorrow evening. Lower humidity behind that, but we're only really going to drop off into the mid-60s still as we start off our Saturday morning. Saturday afternoon, it's going to be fairly pleasant. High pressure overhead, light winds, mostly sunny skies will climb up into the 80s, but humidity is going to be lower, so it is going to feel a little bit nicer. So we head into the second half of the week. We're keeping a very close eye on yet another cold front. Pretty moisture starved, but it's going to bring in some cooler temperatures, possibly below average temperatures. Overnight low tonight of 68 degrees. Those spotty thunderstorms, a lot of those are going to be arriving later on this evening associated with that cold front. Some patchy fog, especially in south central Kentucky. A high of 86 degrees, so not as hot thanks to the cloud cover and scattered thunderstorms. Wind shifting behind that cold front out of the northwest at around 3 to 8 miles an hour. We'll be dry, very pleasant for our Saturday. It's going to be another hot Sunday ahead of yet that other cold front. Again, very moisture starved arriving Sunday night into Monday. Not a lot of rain to work with, but check out those temperatures on the decline. Tuesday, a high of only 79, and then we'll start off Wednesday morning into the upper 50s. So looking pretty pleasant after the stretch of the 90s. It does. Something to look forward to. I know. We Thanks. need it. No, we do. <laughs> Thank you, Lauren. You're welcome. Well, it's pasta on the go. Next, why Fazoli's is taking its act on the road. As we go to break, Doug High's Weekend Planner.
Live entertainment dominates this weekend planner offerings. You know live as in real people actually performing in front of you, not living in an Xbox or on your tablet or the silver screen. It's crazy, I know, but give it a chance. We're lucky to have them. First up, a long-standing star in our bluegrass entertainment venue out of a classic Kentucky location. Woodsong's Old Time Radio Hour takes a field trip to Frankfurt's Buffalo Trace Distillery for a special one-time broadcast. Be part of the studio audience for Bobby Osborne of Rocky Top fame and Joan Osborne, six-time Grammy nominee. Now, you must be seated by 545 for this dynamic duo, Buffalo Trace Distillery in Frankfurt. Next, if you like your cat fights on roller skates, have I got a show for you. It's delightfully awesome. It's roller derby action at its best as our roller girls of Central Kentucky take on the dastardly Jewel City ladies. Catch a flying elbow at Heritage Hall. Events start at 7 p.m. Finally tonight, settle back for a classic murder mystery. Bluegrass Mystery Theater stages high-tech homicide on the tracks at the Bluegrass Railroad Museum in Versailles. Showtime Saturday 2 and 4 p.m. and Sunday at 2 p.m. Folks, we gotta run, but you can find out more about these events we've just detailed and many more by visiting our website at WTVQ.com. You'll find us on the Good Morning Kentucky page with a link to our content partners at the Lexington Convention and Visitors Bureau. They're going to get you up to speed. Weekend's almost here. Make it a great one. This edition of Bluegrass Weekend Planner is brought to you by the Lexington Convention and Visitors Bureau. For more information, log on to visitlex.com. It's a grand opening of the all-new Cartown Suzuki. Right now, get 0% financing for 72 months on any new Suzuki in stock. New 2012 Suzuki SX4 are just $149 per month. Only during the grand opening celebration at the all-new Cartown Suzuki. These orders won't stop. Well, more and more people are bundling their home and auto insurance with Progressive. Sure seems that way. And why wouldn't you? You can save on both your home and auto policies. Yep. We talked about this. Bundling and saving. Now that's progressive. Play Rocket Cat Adventures at Progressive.com. It's the grand opening of the all-new Car Town Suzuki. Right now, get 0% financing for 72 months on any new Suzuki in stock. New 2012 Suzuki SX4 are just $149 per month. Only during the grand opening celebration at the all-new Car Town Suzuki. ABC 36 Storm Team. Powered by Live Viper HD. Discover the new FDA-cleared cutting-edge arthritis treatment that can end knee pain without surgery. Scientists and doctors believe the secret to relieving knee arthritis pain may have been discovered in a rooster's comb. If you suffer from arthritis in your knee, grinding, locking, catching, or swelling, pain using stairs, or have been recommended for knee replacement surgery, listen closely. A renowned pharmaceutical company has extracted and processed an all-natural cushioning and lubricating gel called Hyaluronate from the rooster's comb to provide relief and cushioning for up to six months of pain-free activity. Even if you've tried Heiligen Orthovisc, two parts of Synvisc without good results, there may still be hope. The specialists at your local Osteo Relief Institute offer a 15-minute doctor-administered lubricating injection using state-of-the-art motion imaging so specific and effective, it's covered by most insurances, even Medicare. Call in the next five minutes to schedule your free knee pain consultation. We'll send you free information asked. Call now. For Katie, my new daytime talk show beginning September 10th. She's one of the most successful businesswomen in America, and Lynn Tilton is bringing jobs to Kentucky. The ribbon cutting was today at a new Black Mountain Door facility in Mount Sterling. The company makes metal doors and frames. Tilton owns more companies than any woman in America, and she says it's satisfying to give people jobs. Yes, things may be getting better. But what I spend my time on is thinking about those who really are suffering. Those who are part of the 30 million Americans who are either working part-time or not working or discouraged. This Mount Sterling facility will mean about 60 new jobs. Fizzoli's is starting a nationwide tour. This truck was in the ABC 36 parking lot today. The chain is going to 15 cities in eight weeks to promote itself 
and help a good charity. We're giving out free breadsticks to help raise awareness about uh, Feed the Children. We're raising money for them. In addition to that, we are also promoting our new, uh, whole new Fazoli's about, we've made several changes recently, so we're, we're letting people know about that as well. Fazoli's goal is to raise $50,000 for Feed the Children. You can check out Fazoli's Facebook page or at any Fazoli's location where you can make a donation. It's a tape that will make your, draw, your jaw drop. Kids bully a bus monitor. Wait till you hear part of it next. Extra with me, Maria Menounos, weekdays at 5.30 right here on ABC 36. At Logan's. Thanks so much for staying up with us. Now to a video that's being called shocking and outrageous. Three middle schoolers are on tape bullying an adult bus monitor. Diana Perez talked to the woman on the receiving end. The YouTube video has gone viral. Three middle school students in Rochester, New York, relentlessly taunting and bullying bus monitor Karen Klein. Oh my God, you're so bad. And I tried to ignore them. That's why I didn't hear some of this stuff, because I'm just kind of trying to shut them out. But the jobs against the 68-year-old grandmother only get worse. At one point, she plays into the student's cruel comments about her sweating. The video's response online has been almost as harsh as the kids themselves. It's vile, it's cruel, and it's just plain wrong. I almost threw up. Luis Rocio Jr. recorded that cell phone video. He says he was pressured to do it, and now he's apologizing. I feel bad about how, like, they were making fun of her and everything. But Robert Helms admits his 13-year-old son is one of the bullies. And after his name and address were posted online, Robert says his family has been getting death threats. My heart broke. I couldn't believe my, my son could, could treat another human being like that. The school says the students involved will be disciplined. An online fund was started to raise $5,000 to send Karen on vacation, and strangers have donated generously. That fund is now swelled to $120,000 and counting. Diana Perez, ABC News, New York. Next, Coach Cal is impressed with a UK freshman and an ex-cat. Wants you to wet your whistle with water. Hear from Derek Anderson about the benefits of H2O. Coming up on Nightline, we look into a website that connects beautiful, broke college girls with wealthy older men willing to pay their bills. Plus, athletes from Kobe to McGrady swear by a controversial new pain treatment. But could it help you? Where are your travels taking you? International travels can be risky business. Protect and educate yourself with a visit to Red Point Travel Clinic. Our travel medicine specialist can discuss recommendations and provide the required vaccines based on your destination and medical history. Book your travel consultation at Red Point Travel Clinic today and make the most of your journey. For wherever in the world you're going, safe travels begin with Red Point. With these deals, new glasses really do make you look smart. It's Dr. Pfizer's Value Vision 2 for 99 Summer Sale. Right now, get two complete pairs, including no-line bifocals, just $99. Choose from hundreds of frames to find your hot new look. You can even make your second pair sunglasses. Celebrate summer with two complete pairs, just $99, including no-line bifocals. Plus, free sun lenses for your second pair. Dr. Pfizer's Value Vision. That works. Washer dryer, the latest capacity. Maytag, efficient. Whirlpool, economical. H. H. Gregg. Right now at H. H. Gregg, buy a Whirlpool or Maytag washer dryer pair and save two hundred dollars. Plus, take an extra five percent off with your H. H. Gregg card. That's two hundred dollars off a Whirlpool or Maytag washer dryer pair. Plus, an extra five percent off with your H. H. Gregg card. Delivered and installed. H. H. Gregg and H. H. Gregg.com. We help. 
Cartown Kia has a summer blockbuster for you. Right now, get a $4,000 discount off any select new Kia in stock. Drive home a new 2012 Kia Optima that gets an EPA-estimated 35 highway miles per gallon for just $189 per month. Or a new 2012 Kia Rio that gets an EPA-estimated 40 highway miles per gallon for just $159 per month. And we need your car, so we'll buy any car for cash, even if you don't buy one from us. It's going to be a great summer at Cartown Kia. This portion of ABC 36 News is brought to you in part by Car Town Suzuki. ABC 36 Sports is Solid Blue. Brought to you by Kentucky's new $2 Powerball. More power to you. Nerland's Noel, Alex Poitras, and Archie Goodwin are the headliners of Kentucky's new crop of freshmen. Willie Cauley-Stein, afterthought. But he has John Calipari's attention. Calipari tells ESPN's Andy Katz he's stunned at how good Cauley, Willie Cauley-Stein is. Coach Cal says Cauley-Stein is, quote, so skilled, real skilled. Calipari also says he's considering playing Cauley-Stein and fellow 6'10 freshman Nerland's Noel in the front court at the same time. Former Wildcat Derek Anderson is back in Kentucky this week to launch a new water called Victory H2O, which has no sugar, zero calories, and the electrolytes of a sports drink. Friday, Anderson and several of his former teammates from Kentucky's 1996 National Championship team will be signing autographs at Chrysler in Nicholasville from 6 to 7.30. That's followed by a bowling tournament at J.D. Legends in Nicholasville. Then Saturday, the Victory H2O launch party at the Bluegrass Ballroom at Heritage Hall at 7 o'clock. Former cats from each of UK's last four national championship teams will be in attendance. It doesn't happen at all. I mean, when have you seen 25 All-Americans winning national championship back together at one time? I mean, you might hit and miss a couple, but to get them all back at one time, it's awesome, man. We're going to take pictures and have great memories and be the official water for Kentucky. Anderson was part of that 1996 Kentucky team that finished 34-2, 16-0 in the SEC, and beat teams in the NCAA tournament by an average of 21.5 points on the way to the national title. UK's 2012 champs seemed the closest in comparison as far as talent and dominance, but Anderson says even they are no comparison. The difference in us was we dominated. I mean, we beat teams 86 at points at halftime. We beat Tennessee by 40 at Tennessee. I mean, we just annihilated people. This team barely beat teams because they were young. Now, if they stayed together until they were juniors and seniors, we could have this discussion. But since they were freshmen and they won a championship, you give them the credit for that. But there's really no comparison for us. I mean, we had nine guys go to the NBA, and we had 11 guys that played every game. And it's hard to do. I mean, their, their bench... Couldn't have compared it to our bench. I mean, I got like, if I named off Wayne Turner, Ron Mercer, uh, Walter McCarty, Jeff Shepard, Mark Pope, these are bench players. Now, who compare you, name their bench team, that you going to stick with those guys? Well, Anderson's former coach, Rick Patino, is losing another player, this time to his son. Louisville forward Rakeem Buckles is transferring to Florida International to play for first year head coach Richard Patino. Buckles is the third player to transfer from Louisville this offseason, joining Jared Swapshire and Stephen Van Treese. Former football cat Randall Cobb of the Green Bay Packers was at Lexington Sports Cards Thursday night, signing his name to some memorabilia. He said he made sure to pop his head in over at UK's Nutter training facility to see some familiar faces. I'm just glad to be back. I uh, got a chance to work with some kids at a camp at Champs Camp today. And uh, just being here and seeing the fans and meeting all the ones that want to come out and meet is, uh, you know, always an honor. Just because uh, they supported me so long, I want to show my love back to them. Well, you heard Randall mention Champ Camp. The two-day football camp got going at Bryan Station Thursday. It's put on by former Wildcat Champ Kelly, who is now the Denver Broncos Assistant Director of Pro Personnel. The Mile High City is home to several former cats, Wesley Woodyard, Jeremy Jarman, Jacob Tammy, and Danny Trevathan, who's been practicing with the first team defense during recent organized team activities. A guy like Danny Trevathan um, was, was, a, was a great guy for the Denver Broncos. He's a self-made guy who came to the University of Kentucky. He busts his butt every year, every play, and he became one of the best tackling machines in the SEC. And so for the Denver Broncos to have an opportunity to, 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 to watch this guy and help this guy grow into an NFL player is exciting for us, and we look forward to seeing what he's going to bring this season. Former Wild
Wildcat Alex Meyer has become just the second UK player ever to be selected for the Major League Baseball Futures game, which will be played July 8th in Kansas City as part of the MLB All-Star Game festivities. Meyer, currently with the Washington Nationals South Atlantic League Club, the Hagerstown Suns, he's 6-3 with a 3.33 ERA, 77 strikeouts in 70 and a third innings. That's why Meyer takes the Kentucky Lottery pick three play of the day. The last Wildcat, the first Wildcat to have played in the Futures game was James Paxton. That was last year. Ooh, nice little bit of trivia then. We'll be uh, right back with another check of your weather. Weeknights at 6 on my TDQ2 for Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. As host Tim Lair takes you on a culinary tour of Kentucky. Breakfast, barbecue, fine dining, and everything in between. Get all the chef's secrets weeknights at 6 on my TDQ2. There is some good news on the horizon for us. I know. I am finally glad to be giving this news. We have moderate drought in eastern Kentucky, so we could use that 40% coverage. Not a lot of rain, but we'll take anything we can get and below average temperatures next week. All right. Well, there is a lot more news. Here's the good. Here's the good news. Four hours away. GMK.